Hi, I'm Linda Peterson with Friendly Plastic TV. On this episode, I'm dedicating this to all you viewers who have emailed me asking me how do you use the pellets. And I've had other emails asking me to do more home decor projects. So I'm actually going to combine the two. I'm going to show you how to use the pellets and combine that to create a decorative bowl. It's very easy, it's very fun, and if you think you can sculpt, you might want to think again. I want to show you the difference between friendly plastic pellets when you put them in the water as opposed to when they're ready to come out of the water. So before they go into the water you can see that they're white and they're milky and when they go into the water and they completely melt you can see here that they're completely clear and in this heated state they are also very very pliable. One thing I want you to notice too is that my water is not simmering. It is not coming to a boil. It is hot and it does, you know, it is hotter, hot to the touch, but it's not hot enough to burn my fingers so that I can just uh, pull my pellets out and begin working with them. This is something you want to keep in mind. Be very careful when working with hot water. We don't want you to burn yourself. I think you'll really love the feel of the friendly plastic in your hands. It's very therapeutic. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some color and I have some distress powders here that I'm going to sprinkle on and I'm going to mix these into the friendly plastic. You're going to notice as you begin to work with the plastic and massage it together it's cooling so it will get progressively stiffer and stiffer. And so you're going to have to transfer this back and forth to the water to uh, heat it and soften it again. and uh, continue working with it until it, your uh, embossing powder is completely mixed in. You can use as much embossing powder for color or as little to just give it a hint of color as you would like. So once your plastic is completely heated and it's colored to the density that you want it colored, what I'd like for you to do is get an acrylic brayer and coat it completely with petroleum jelly or baby oil, anything that you have hanging around like that because you don't want your plastic to stick. And all I'm doing is I'm stretching the plastic. Because this is a very free form type of decorative bowl, you don't have to be precise in your stretching. It doesn't have to be uh, you know, the exact same thickness all the way around your bowl. Okay, I know it looks like just a big, big blob of plastic right now, but I promise it'll look a lot better when we get it finished. If there's any areas of uh, plastic that need to be heated again, if they become a little stiff like this area over here, just tap it with your heat gun. Now you're going to want to have some sort of form, whether this is a glass bowl or ceramic bowl. Um, just make sure that the surface is completely clean. And what you're going to do is you're just going to stretch and lay your plastic over the top. Again, this is very, very free form. Some places are going to be thicker than others. That is okay. Now before it's dry, and if you need to heat the surface up again, you can do so again by using your heat gun. Okay, I reheated this area with my heat tool, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to press in some different textures. So I have a rubber stamp here, and I'm just going to lay this on the plastic and press down. You're not really meant to um, 
actually transfer the pattern on what you're looking for is simply texture if your rubber stamp happens to stick like mine did then let it completely cool and it will release right off here's a glimpse of some of the detail that I put into with my rubber stamp and again, you're not necessarily looking for the entire pattern on the stamp. You're just looking to add a little bit of detail and texture. And this almost gives it a lacy type of feel. Next, what you're going to want to do is allow this to cool completely. And then once it cools completely, it should just pop right off of your glass because friendly plastic generally doesn't stick to glass unless unless you've applied some sort of adhesive. Now what we're going to do is we're going to color this and give this more of an aged look. And this is a color, uh, a very similar color to one of the colors I did in my bathroom recently. And I just loved this Italian uh, Venetian look that it gave my wall. So I wanted to try this color on, the, uh, on this bowl. And I did start with a base color um, of, this is kind of a, a mustardy yellow, so what I'm doing now is I'm just rubbing this color into all the grooves. Okay, Actually, I'm going to apply a little bit of, this is glaze, and glaze just extends your color. But I'm going to wipe this completely around the entire surface, both inside and out of my bowl. This next part, it gets a little messy. So you're going to want to do this in a well ventilated area. Um, also, this is oil based. I'm using a uh, wood stain actually, and I don't want to uh, tip this because I've got the lid off of it, but this is a wood finish and the color is Jake, Jacob Bean. It is fairly dark and it kind of looks like mocha. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to saturate my towel here with a little bit of that stain. And if you get this on your fingers, you can uh, use some mineral spirits or something like that to clean it up. And then I'm just going to rub it over the surface get it down into those cracks and we're going to it will actually age and it's just going to look beautiful when this is finished let me show you so there's a little bit Look at the beautiful texture that you get and the shine that you get with this. Isn't that gorgeous? So I have completely uh, aged the inside and I've completely done the outside. So let me zoom that in so that you can see what the close to finished product looks like. Look at all that beautiful texture that it picks up. Isn't that gorgeous? So there you have it. It's a beautiful aged bowl made with friendly plastic. And the great thing about it is that no two are ever alike. You can get more project ideas and inspiration on the web at friendlyplastic.blogspot.com. Also visit our sponsor at amico.com. Online and live classes available through crafttechuniversity.com. You can also friend us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.